right, hello wine drinking people. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of January, and uh, kicking off the year, well, it's our second offer of the year, and we did a few videotape recordings, so really our first video of the year, 2015. We've got a lot of great events to start out the year, including our Lafitte Rothschild tasting. Back to 1893 this Friday, which is pretty much sold out. Our Bordeaux tasting at Cafe Max, sold out. Hey, we may have a few seats left for Giuseppe coming from a Vignonese winery at uh, um, Lobster Bar in Las Olas. We're going to have the menu up as soon as we get that from those guys. They did a great job with our Schramsberg event last year with you, Davies. So uh, keep an eye out for the menu for that event. I believe they still have seats left for that. So uh, they got a couple things you can come to with us next week. And, of course, our best of tasting, the biggest tasting we do. Pretty much already sold out if you want a reservation for that on the 23rd of January. You better get on the waiting list because uh, you have got 100 people coming for that. But don't you worry, we got 100 different wines for that and uh, pretty much our top selections from last year. And uh, this is a wine that, uh, well, it's not our first time we've had these wines. I'm taking wine company. We know the people involved very well, Carlo Trinquero and Josh Phelps. Carlo Trinquero from the Trinquero family. Yes, the folks that invented Sutter Home, White Zinfandel. They made a bunch of money on that. We've been selling their Trinquero family wines. And then uh, Josh Phelps, well, he's got a very famous last name, but... Uh, his father, Chris Phelps, a winemaker at Swanson Vineyards. He was at Camus before that. So both of these kids grew up in Napa Valley and winemaking families. And, uh, well, after going off to college, they came back to Napa, realizing that, man, what the hell did we leave for? I mean, what would you rather do than be in the wine business? And uh, a little bit of college will... Uh, We'll teach you that. And uh, these 2012 vintage, well, this is not their first vintage. I think 10 was the first vintage of Taken uh, Cabernet Merlot blend that we had here in the store with the guys. And I have to say the wine was very good. This is the most impressive offering to me. The complicated Chardonnay, I didn't find so complicated. But you, you knew these guys were going to strike gold eventually with their history and their families in the wine business, uh, Very, both very successful. And uh, this 2012, they found some great grapes here and a great vintage in Napa Valley. I was out there and experienced about 300 of these wines uh, last February, and I have to say, man, every single wine I taste, it tastes like a finished wine, even though most of them were still uh, in the barrel and uh, not going to be bottled for another six, eight months or more, and uh, this 2012, an outstanding vintage. And hey, hey, Robert Parker, we gave you the review. He loves 2012. He loved this wine, 93 points. I would say you can't drink points, but man, you're going to pay for them, and this may be the best value if you look at its score that we've had this year, 2012. Taken Cabernet Blend for 20 $24.50? Are you kidding me? You find me a 93-point Parker wine that we can sell for under 25 bucks from Napa. Well, this is still under the radar. Not a lot of people know about this wine, but man, it is a big wine. Intense aromas of ripe blackberry cassis, some blueberry liqueur-like fruit, crushed graphite, earthy notes, uh, dark chocolate in here, espresso, hints of vanilla, toast yolk. This wine is big. It's a little monster, but still balanced. Still has some nice freshness at the end. It's not one of these overly sweet wines but if you like big napa valley cabernets man you are going to love this one especially at this price well we only got a few six packs 56 packs that's it folks so uh get it while it's here i'm your host andrew lampasoni signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first